Like yourself, I am a thought, an eternal thought in the mind of God, which is itself eternity. This physical body is also a thought, a thought about coagulated matter, a thought about density in expression, a thought that confines itself to the physical world. Still in all, it is a thought. And so all the universe is simply one big thought made up of many smaller thoughts, component parts if you care to think about it like that. How absolutely fluid and beautiful then is thought. Thought is so incredibly resourceful. Why, it can even think about itself thinking about a thought. So if you follow it, you've got one thought thinking that it is thinking yet other thoughts about thought itself. Though it might seem a bit convoluted, I tell you that the universe itself is not but the constant and lovely interplay of thought playing upon itself. The grand experiment that some call God. When we do see things in terms of thought, then we also see how some thoughts, or people, if you care to call them that, have thought that reality is a very set and constant standard. That simply is their thought. When it is equally valid to realize that other thoughts don't think that at all. And so what one thought might say is the law, the standard, the way it is, is obviously that thought's own personal belief, opinion, which is simply another way of saying its own personal thought. Why all this talk about thought then? For you see, when you can understand it, any so-called rule or law or more or belief is still simply someone's thought. Then you are free from those things and free to explore your own thought and the thoughts about that. There are some people, thoughts, that think, I can't follow all this thinking about thought. I should only want something very solid to deal with. Tell me this is right or wrong. Tell me how I might acquire this thing or that thing. And yet, a bit of introspection might reveal they're still dealing in thought. For their most solid physical desire is still but a thought. One they are holding perhaps desiring. They should want magic. They should want the easy way, they say. They should want that someone, simply another thought in God's mind, should simply give them a formula whereby they might obtain the object of their desire. But I say, as plainly as possible, simplicity alone will grant you your desire. The key then is to keep the thought simple. We find in an overly complex society, such as the contemporary Western culture seems to be and to be becoming, that simplicity is often lost. And yet look to the child, the child who desires one thing very simply, one could say very humbly, and yet humility is now given a new meaning, for it now encompasses that belief in simplicity 
as the best and most efficient way to accomplish something. We speak about simplicity now. We speak about the fact that if man truly desires something, anything, he does himself a great service to simplify his desire and then to simplify it again to quickly obtain his result. So much talk these days in metaphysical circles about creation by thought, creating one's own reality. Visualize and you shall have the thing you visualize, it is said. And yet we would simply add to all of this the key, the magic word, simplicity. That to simplify the vision is to coalesce it and thus to really manifest it. That God himself, herself, is the simplest of creatures. And so we would wean modern man away from his complex web of thinking into a beautiful place of simplified thought. We would say, O oh man, that which you desire can be bought for the price of simplicity. for this purpose that we suggest the contemplation of nature not alone to appreciate her but to truly watch a blade of grass lying on one's belly as it were right on the earth this is an act of power for therein if one be focused can be seen the simplicity which is the power of nature. How simple is that blade of grass, and yet how elegant. Let man then come again to the point of simplicity in all things really, and watch how his pains and aches, frustrations and heartbreaks, all melt away like the morning fog leaving the simplicity of what is, and, if one looks a bit deeper, of what can be. All things can be. Indeed, somewhere in the mind of God, all things are already. They exist upon a plane of simplicity, and there they can be perceived and achieved. Your fondest goal, O oh man, is only a very short distance away, a distance spelled simplicity. Simplify and you become. Simplify and you attain. Simplify and you achieve. For when you begin to see that when you simplify, the thing that you think you desire is already within your grasp, it is. Indeed, it is you coming to understand yourself in the greater sense. And so we step into the simplicity of God, the silence of the simple mind, and the perfect state of grace. <laughs>